Wipe that tears, mama. Lose your face, father. Never let the struggle effects on my eyes, mama. So, here you see the camps. Satellite photos. The growing of the camps. The different camps. On this map of Syria, you see in green the rebel held zones around Aleppo, Idlib, in north of Damascus and around Dara. And you see in yellow refugee camps in Turkey, Afar, near Homs, and in the south. Dara. And it's interesting to see it's just near the liberated zones where the refugee camps had been built. People wanna fix it, not know when how they block it to block it, no Jesus no prophet to bluff it. Most like there in the yes and we repeat it, we don't need it, or even one pull it. We are under pressure and the youth are blessed to die for heaven. But brother, listen, keep your mouth open. This silence will never save a kid from attack, keep it open. Blood will never build a nation, keep it open. Women are getting raped, keep it fucking open. So, and here you see, since the beginning of the conflict, the dead statistic. It began on March 2011, and um, the first year it is under 400 per day, and Till 2012, it go over thousand, thousand four hundred per day, and you see to the um, different cities in different colors. For example, Damascus. You see, 2011, nothing happened, and it only begin on the second part of the year 2012 the Damascus had many deaths and now I will let you with some videos about the hacking till the last two years for those wondering what President Bashar al-Assad and his wife are doing as the world watches in shock the brutal suppression of the Syrian people, there appears to be an answer. The London-based Guardian newspaper says it has obtained more than 3,000 documents believed to be emails sent and received by Bashar al-Assad and his wife Asma. You do get a sense from a lot of the emails of a kind of life in a, in a gilded cocoon, uh, extraordinarily insulated from some of the horrors going on in the rest of the country. As the Syrian army killed demonstrators across the country, Assad and his wife joked and shopped online. In a message to his wife on July 6th, President Assad mocked political reforms, saying they are rubbish laws of parties, elections and media. Horrified by the violence, world leaders imposed sanctions on Syria. So Bashar al-Assad used a third party in the U.S. to buy music from the online store iTunes. Between June and September of 2011, Assad's wife bought thousands of dollars worth of luxury goods, including a $4,000 vase from Harrods in London and a $9,800 handmade table. On February 5th, Assad emailed his wife a love song the same day he launched a brutal assault on Homs and Amnesty International accused the Syrian government of crimes against humanity. The emails reflect a leader who seems to have lost touch with reality. And as opposition activists and fighters flee from their strongholds across the country, 
The messages could be seen as the words of a man determined to win at any cost. Nisreen Shamaile, Al Jazeera. Reuters is reporting via Twitter that its blog platform was hacked on Thursday and at least two false stories about the Syrian conflict have been posted. The blog Value Walk has the details. The tweets they posted indicated that several blog posts had been written and attributed to their writers but were in fact the work of hackers. Reuters has yet to indicate if they know who the hackers are or if they know the reason behind the incident. One fake story was attributed to Reuters reporter Jeffrey Goldfarb. The article claimed that the Free Syrian Army was abandoning Aleppo and featured a fabricated interview with FSA leader Riyad al-Assad. Reuters quickly removed the blog post, but a cached version still exists via Google. The Free Syrian Army blames regime forces for the false story. And while Reuters isn't pointing fingers at anyone just yet, a writer for The Atlantic says the evidence points to one probable suspect. The computer hacking outfit with the most prominent track record in this conflict is Syrian Electronic Army, loyal to the Syrian regime and known for breaking into foreign sites it perceives as sympathetic to the rebels. Several Twitter users and the blog Moon of Alabama reported content from the fake stories as actual news before Reuters was able to take down the articles. NBC's Bob Sullivan writes, this security breach illustrates the dangers of Internet journalism. News services have long been an attractive target for hackers looking to get attention. But attention getting hacks have always been little more than pranks. The real danger of a news site attack comes from a quiet hack that potentially spreads falsehoods under what appears to be the banner of an unbiased news service. Reuters states that its blogging platform will remain offline until the source of the hack is discovered. For Newsy, I'm Christian Bryan. Multiple sources, the real story. The soldiers are hackers. The battlefield is online. The pro government Syrian electronic army has been defacing activist websites. And this is the latest counterattack against the government by groups including Anonymous. Hackers have defaced at least three government ministry websites and seven city sites. One hacker told us their aim is to create a healthy dialogue and educate the public, expose the rampant censorship and human rights abuses. Essentially, we want to do everything in our power to help our brothers and sisters in Syria. Visitors to the Syrian Ministry of Culture website now see a video of a famous activist singer who had his throat slashed and another of a prominent cartoonist who had his hands broken. One thing that experts say makes this latest assault interesting is that hackers are warning Syrian internet users they're being watched. This message on the Ministry of Transport site says don't let Bashar monitor you online. We've seen quite a bit of uh, sort of attempted phishing um, a attacks from the Syrian government, um, as well as, you know, perhaps backing of the Syrian Electronic Army. And so um, I do think that the Syrian government is getting a bit savvier um, as time goes by when it comes to trying to, uh, to silence the opposition online. A hack on Saturday and Sunday placed this interactive map on government sites. It charts 2,316 killings since protests began in March. One hacker told Al Jazeera that targeting these websites was easy, and they say more is planned in the very near future. Just like the protests on the streets, the online activism shows little sign of ending soon. Will Jordan, Al Jazeera. Teach what you know, and help others as you would ask for help. Come join us.